Welcome back to the channel and today I'm gonna mess with air stabilization using a part I have not actually used before and I want to finally experiment with it and that is the gyroscope. Now as you can see this vehicle right now I've just attached a thruster to a seat and it is not very stable at all. It just kind of spins around. There's no there's no sense of control in any form whatsoever but with this gyroscope part it says it really wants to stay upright when activated and I've seen it used on creations but I have not played with this at all myself yet and I think it's about time. It is set to Q right now so presumably when I press Q, oh look at that, it just instantly snaps us. Holy cow, all right, that was, uh, that was a little extreme actually. So it looks like the way I have it set up right now is um, it wants to be upright in the sense that this part on the left is the top. So when I press Q, you can see that it instantly orients me so that the uh, gyroscope is facing upright. And whoa! Okay, this is already turning out to be awesome. There's gonna be some fun stuff happening in this episode. But I think my ultimate goal in my experiments with this is to build a really stable functioning laser drone that I can uh, have fly up in the air and then I can shoot and aim lasers down without having to worry about balancing myself or keeping myself level. But before we get there, we gotta play around with this thing a little bit. It looks like um, one of the settings is initial direction, which I think means whatever direction this gyroscope spawns in, that is going to be at zero point. So now I think I should actually stay level when I press Q. Um, well here, oh, is it on? It's just on right now. Oh, look at that. So yeah, and then with it off, this is what happens. And when I press Q, you can see it just uh, makes us, it just snaps us vertical. Oh, it does seem that we are a little bit off to the side. Huh. I don't know if that's just a strength issue. What if I turn the strength all the way up? I'm not sure what I want to do on spin dampen just yet. Oh, whoa. Whoa, what is going on with the seat? What it? Okay, is that, is that just a visual glitch? Okay, it appears to be just a visual glitch. Because the thrust particles are not changing. But uh, as you can see, the gyroscope is very, very strong. What if I put spin dampen way up and put this down a little bit from max? All right, we still have that weird visual glitch. All right, now that I understand how the gyroscope works, let's see how easy or hard it's going to be to build a functional laser drone. So I thought it might be kind of fun to build an actual quadcopter. I was thinking about using thrusters at first to make this, uh, to power the quadcopter. But I think when it comes to vertical up and down uh, power, I think propellers might be kind of fun to experiment with because we actually have uh, propeller pieces in this game now. All right, so if I go ahead and attach a bunch of propellers, and these, these aren't gonna collide with each other, it doesn't look like. Um, but I don't know if I actually have to angle these. Ooh, ooh, that might be a little bit of an issue in the middle there, huh? Well, let's find out. If I, okay, these are not moving. Let me bump up the strength of the motors here. Okay, yep, that's definitely a collision. That's an issue. All right, well, you know what? Maybe this is gonna be fine if I just move these out a little bit and then expand this just by a little bit. There we go. All right, I think I fixed it. Now, whoa, okay, I should probably reverse the, uh, the mirrored versions of those, huh? Because right now they're spinning in the same direction, which is causes us to spin around. All right, reverse direction, reverse direction. There we go, now. Yeah, so we are a little bit front heavy. Um, I guess I could add a little bit of a tail. How much of this, whoops, how much does this weigh? 550 kilograms. Can I get a 550 kilogram thing? All right, I'll just add a 600 kilogram thing on the back. This should be a little bit more even. Oh yeah, that's looking great. Um, okay, so the only thing about this is no matter which direction the propellers are spinning, uh, it makes me go up. <laughs> okay, let me try putting these on a slider, see how this feels. Oh my goodness. It takes like nothing to get these to start going. These things have a lot of lift apparently. All right, you know what? I'm going to uh, make these half propellers because yeah, that was way too much lift. All right, how about this? All right, I, may, I guess I just need to add more weight to this thing, which I will. Okay, so this thing is gonna have lift with propellers, but we're gonna need to be able to go forwards and backwards and uh, rotate as well, because we wanna be able to control this thing in the air. So let's give this thing some forward thrust like this. Oh, that actually looks kind of cool. These are gonna be activated by W to go forward. I guess we should have a backwards thrust as well, shouldn't we? We should actually, we should kind of give this thing everything. This thing should be able to strafe, it should be able to go forwards and backwards, and it should be able to 
yeah. Let's give this thing full control ability. Okay, so now with these thrusters, when I press W, I go forward. And when I press S, I go backwards. And right now, the center of thrust isn't very well aligned. Nothing... <laughs> nothing really is working that great. Oh my goodness, this is... This is chaos, and I love it. <laughs> Yeah, see, it's about the journey. It's not even about the destination. The things that happen along the way to a functional vehicle are sometimes awesome. All right, so we have up, down, we have forward and backwards. Now we need yaw left and right and strafe left and right, which um, I might be able to program with the same thrusters. Let me see. So if I put thrusters like this, these ones can be used to turn and or they could be used to yaw but if i use logic i might be able to use it for both oh actually i don't even need to use logic these have alternate inputs so for this particular input if i want it to yaw me to the left i want it to turn left when i press a but if i want it to strafe to the left i'll have the alternate input be q so now this one when it activates for turning it's going to yaw me to the right which i want to be d Oops, let's have the regular input be D. And the alternate input is gonna be Q, because that's gonna be my strafe to the left input. All right, I think this can work without logic, which is kind of cool. All right, so this one will turn me to the left when I press A, and it'll push me to the right when I press E. This one will turn me to the right when I press D, and it will push me to the right when I press E. So now, let me make sure I have those all hooked up correctly. So A, Oh boy, I got, oh, I did this wrong. Not the controls, I don't think. I just gotta make sure that these are on normal instead of toggle. I need to only activate when I uh, press the buttons. Okay, so now, when I press A, we turn to the left. When I press D, we turn to the right. When I press Q, we strafe to the left. When I press E, we strafe to the right. Look at that, full control using only a couple of thrusters here. This is actually pretty cool. I actually have full control now. That's all of the controls I think I need. And then I can go up in the air. The only thing this doesn't have is a uh, pitch and roll control, but that is exactly the purpose of the gyroscope. So uh, here, let's, let's go ahead and put a gyroscope on this thing. And it should be as simple as having that there. And can I have that always on? I think if I have a basic light, have it always on. I'll set the gyroscope to receive an input from zero and I'll set this light to give an output of zero. And that should, I think, keep the gyroscope always on. There we go. So now, that gyroscope should keep us nice and level. And, whoa, okay, this is a little weird. Whoa, okay, I mean, it's working. The propellers are too strong, actually. Like, these blades, have way too much lift. I need to make myself heavier. I mean, I am gonna be adding a whole laser system that I'm, I'm gonna try to aim it with arrows, like a whole laser turret on the bottom of this thing, which would be kind of cool. You know what I'm realizing this game needs? This game needs camera blocks, so you can just switch to a camera view that you can like place on top of your gun. That would be awesome, or your laser. But look at how stable this thing is. I just flew back over here and just settled right down. All right, but I definitely need to make this thing heavier because right now, like, I, these things hardly spin to keep myself level. Okay, so now a laser turret. Let's see what we can do here. So I think the obvious thing is to start off with a power swivel. This is what we're gonna rotate our entire turret on. And yeah, this is just gonna be left and right. All right, we'll do a T intersection off of that. And then we need the um, the up and down. Ooh, ooh, I think I have the perfect thing for that. This 90 degree swivel. I think that should actually give us exactly what we need. Okay, so now this means with arrows, you can see I can turn this turret left to right and then rotate the swivels up and down. So I'm gonna have full control over this thing. It's gonna be kind of epic. All right, let me see what is the size of a laser here. All right, so I can actually only fit one laser like that or have double lasers. I think having a little bit closer, yeah, like a double barrel laser might be kind of nice like that. All right, and I'm trying to make room for a laser sight as well so I can aim before I power the lasers. So we have this aiming laser. I'm like placing the parts where I want them first before I actually attach them to the rest of the vehicle. You can see none of this stuff is attached to each other. But here, I can do a wedge like that for the aiming laser. This is kind of cool. Actually, I'm starting to think of something even maybe cooler, like a quad laser just for that little extra bit of destruction and it's gonna be a little bit more symmetrical that looks kind of cool doesn't it all right i like that i think i can use flex beams like this 
It's a lot of parts just bunched in together, but I think this is going to be the most the most elegant solution that I can come up with right now. And then, oh, how do I attach this laser though? Ah, oh, I just realized none of these lasers are overdriven. Okay, hold on. You gotta add an overdrive to all of these. All right, and then reattach that. There we go. All right, max strength, overdriven lasers. Do they, look, look at this. Do they work? All right, there we go. Oops, wrong way. All right, they do appear to be working. What about my aiming laser? I can turn those on and off. My aiming laser is number one. There we go. So that should be able to aim us. Yeah. All right, now let's see if this thing can actually get up in the air with this gyro. It is a little, ooh, it's a little front heavy. And that's gonna change as I uh, move my turret around like this, see? But I think I can probably edit the strength. Oh, this is, this looks so cool. Oh boy, yeah, get up there. All right, let's 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 play around with the strength settings on the gyroscope to see if we can uh, get this thing to be a little bit more stable. All right, how's this feel now? All right, we're up. Okay. Okay, I mean, we're still, I feel like we can still be heavier, but all things considered, this laser aims really nicely. Oh man, this thing looks so cool. I'm still learning how to fly it. Like I'm having trouble zeroing in the strength of the propellers because it seems to have kind of like an up and down effect and I want to like, I want it to level off. All right, here, I'm aiming. You can see I'm aiming at that building right now. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's get more altitude. Aiming at that building and there we go. Oh, total destruction all the way up through the building. That was great. But yeah, my control over altitude, I, it's not very consistent right now, which I don't like. Oh, this thing is so good. Whoops, and that goes, ah. I need somehow to, I need to, <laughs> I'm just uh, collateral damage incarnate right now. I need somehow to be able to follow the aim of this thing, but I don't know, I don't think I can like set the camera to follow this. All right, I wonder, can I put the gyroscope on an overdrive? Does that, is that a thing? Does that make sense? No, overdrive does not apply to gyroscopes. All right, but we do have like a direction sensor and like movement sensors and things like that. So I'm wondering if I can program this thing to automatically stabilize its position when I'm not trying to move it. That would be super nice. This might be a little bit over my head though, as far as the complexity goes. All right, so the logic was a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be to try to get this to equalize its altitude and it's not perfect, um, but I'm actually only, I only really am using the down sensor. And I've had to change these repellers to be either on or off, not the slider version that we've had. But the way I have it is that when we're going down, this sensor will detect that and send a signal here, which will then send a signal to tell these propellers to spin. So it'll avoid going down, but it only reacts to going down. So that means that we do keep going down slightly. And it looks like this here. If I go up in the air and I let go of everything, you can see that once we start going down, it activates and it tries to keep us kind of somewhat, you know, level, but we are slowly going down. But I've also enabled it so that um, if I press my down button, it actually turns off the signal from going, uh, fr from going into the propellers from the down sensor. So I can still just manually go down and prevent it from trying to stop me. So that's kind of nice. And seeing the way that's behaving, it seems like this thing is getting a lot heavier already. So let's see if this feels a little bit better with some of the additional propellers added now. All right. Oh, that actually does feel much better. So yeah, they're gonna have like a little bit of a pulsing action going on, but I feel like we're a lot more agile now. And now I don't have to worry so much about keeping myself at the right altitude. It's gonna, it's doing a way better job now than I was doing it manually, even though it's still not perfect. Okay, so now I want it to avoid floating. Cause you can see right now we are constantly floating backwards. So I think I can set it with another direction sensor that detects, um, uh, oh, there's north, south, east, and west. Wait, so how do I, de I want to detect in a certain direction. Oh, sensor direction. So sensor direction, I believe is the direction that the sensor is facing. So yeah, now this is a little bit different. I have to uh, put it on the sensor mode. So now it'll respond to the direction that it's facing. So it's facing towards the back. All right, let's see if that works on principle. Yeah, so when I'm going backwards, you can see this is on now. Okay, I think I figured it out. So now if I press my backwards button, there is no way that it can send a signal, but only if the backwards button is not pressed, then the sensor can send a signal. 
Okay, now I believe it should work. So when I end up going backwards, you can see it's trying to fight it by activating the uh, the thrusters here. So if I press forwards, no problem, I can go forwards. And if I press reverse, I go in reverse, no problem. And if I let go, it's gonna counteract that by activating those thrusters and just stabilizing me in one spot so I don't go floating away. Like when I go forward and release, you can see I start floating and I'm not very stable. But if I go backwards and release, it uh, it just tries to counteract that. So now I got to do the same thing for the other direction. And we're going to create somewhat of a stable vehicle here, I hope. All right, I think I got it. So now when I go forward and then release, you can see that the front thrusters counteract that movement and then stabilize me. So now the only thing I don't have that for is my strafing. I'll still float to the left, as you can see and float to the right. And I guess the yaw is also... Oh no, the yaw actually... The yaw actually is, is not very floaty. I kind of like that. So I only have to do it with strafing now. Okay. All right, I think I fully programmed this cell to just be auto-stabilizing in every way. So first of all, it's maintaining a somewhat okay height, just slowly, slowly descending, but we're just gonna ignore that little minor flaw. But now, check it out. If I uh, strafe all the way to the right and then I just stop, it gets to get stabilized itself, and that's kind of cool. And then same thing, strafing to the left. So we're not gonna keep floating in that direction after we do it. And then of course, uh, forward and back, same thing. It's just gonna auto-stabilize itself uh, to prevent it from moving too much. And it just I just got lucky that the fact that the uh, yaw just kind of automatically stopped itself pretty quick. Okay, so now, let me see what it's like to try to aim at a building. You saw how difficult it was a little while ago before I programmed this thing to kind of stabilize itself. So now let me turn my aiming laser on. Now I can start aiming uh, pretty much anywhere from here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, the, and the gyro is just keeping, tra keeping me level. All right, there we go. And then I can go ahead and fire. And I definitely got to change the controls. I, I have my uh, up and down inverted, so it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, this is nice. This is really nice. And here, I'll move closer to this building, gain some altitude above it, and let's try to let's try to rain destruction directly down from the top of this one. So here, I can strafe myself over, and it's really easy to just kind of position myself in one spot, and then I will aim straight down. All right, and fire. Oh, I forgot that the laser's a little bit above the, uh, or the aiming site's a little bit above the lasers. But we've taken out a pretty much a quarter of the building pretty easily. And then, oh, I'm on top of the building. Here, let me go up. Oh my goodness, the whole top of it just disintegrated. All right, that's definitely one way to do it. All right, but I just found out where this thing really shines. I've also turned off the particle effects of the uh, thrusters so we can just see it better. And just, just driving around is kind of awesome because of the strafing cancellation when I turn and face in a certain direction, it actually prevents me from drifting out to the side too much and reorients myself kind of straight where I'm facing. So it feels a lot more natural than um, I would normally expect to just kind of drive around in, in any particular direction. So here, let me um, change the camera mode to follow. Yeah, here we go. And now let's see what this thing feels like here. All right, let's get up. Oh, that actually, the follow cam is actually not that bad. The way it kind of floats around as you turn. It's pretty cool. And then I can turn the laser on. And uh, here, let me get some height. I can aim this laser. Oh, as we go through, that was actually pretty fun. Oh, that was satisfying. Yeah, and then I can go ahead and stop and just uh, start raining destruction down just from a stationary point. Decide I've had enough and fly on through here. This is actually so much better of a vehicle than I ever thought I could build in this game, to be honest. Like, it, this was easier to do than I expected. Yeah, so I'll be uploading this to the workshop if you guys want to uh, download it and try it out yourself. I'll probably just optimize the aiming to be a little bit less twitchy. But yeah, if you guys have any other cool ideas for vehicles that you'd like to see in, uh, or other just concepts you'd like to see in Instruments of Destruction, let me know down in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.